if you go into other on, uh, well, take my word for it. If you're on the Voyager, I don't want to show you my inbox, but you can hook up to Gmail. I, I've got my Gmail account going on the Voyager. It works just fine. Um, on AT&T, you're not going to be able to do that, which is, you know, a knock. It just depends on what service you use, but I really wish AT&T would, uh, and Google would get together and work out whatever they need to work out so you could get your Gmail on AT&T devices. Uh, you can access your um, your messaging features on the Voyager from the front of the screen, the touch screen as well. You can go into the messaging app there and you can go to your all your messaging. You can also uh, go to your mobile IM, mobile email. The Voyager also offers visual voicemail, which is kind of a nice feature. And uh, when you get beyond that, you know, this is mostly, I think what you're looking at on these devices is, is using the, the messaging. But obviously, when you know, there's other stuff as well. You get beyond that, and I think the advantage goes to Voyager in most cases. Um, Voyager has a better web browser, which we'll fire up here. We'll fire up the web browser on Quickfire as well. They call it MediaNet. So let's uh, let's enter a URL here. Hey, look, it's Phone Dog. Now neither of these phones, you know, is a full-on smartphone browser kind of thing. So take it with a grain of salt. But go to Phone Dog on both of them. You can see I'm having a little bit of trouble with the uh, touch screen there. So, the Voyager loads it up pretty quickly over uh, Verizon's really good Evdu network, high speeds. And you can see actually rendering the page out, a little bit of a challenge because the phone dog page is pretty complex. Lots of stuff going on, etc. It's a full-on desktop page. Um, quick fire. Interesting. Give me an error. Let's... Uh, Let's try that again. So here you can see the Voyager still rendering the page out. Again, it's not like an iPhone. It's not like one of the newer Blackberries. It's not like an Android. Um, you know, but not bad. You can definitely get out to full HTML pages and not just the mobile web. Uh, we'll do another page here. We'll go to NY Times and and yeah, my quickfire crashed, which happened to me before when I tried to go to Phone Dog. So we'll uh, we'll take it easy here on the quickfire quickfire's browser, and um, we will go to NY Times and see what happens. A mobile optimized site. Oops. So here's the uh, New York Times site on the Voyager, and we'll zoom out a little bit. And I crashed that one too. So web browsing, obviously not the strong suit of either phone. The uh, the quick fire renders up the mobile version of the New York Times here. And you know, it's usable. I think 
You know, my general experience with, uh, ooh, look at that, Apple's chief taking a medical leave. There's some news. Uh, my general experience with both devices has been that the Voyager does a little bit better with web browsing. You can get to more of the uh, more of the HTML web and not just the optimized web. With the Quick Fire, uh, you're going to want to stay within the, the optimized web most of the time, the mobile optimized web. But um, there we go, Steve Jobs taking the leave from Apple until the end of June. Interesting. You know, business stuff aside, Steve, get well soon. Uh, with Anyway, so I think web browsing a little bit of an edge to the Vo uh, Voyager. Again, you're not going to want to do heavy full HTML browsing on either phone. We'll take a quick look here at multimedia. And so both of them have kind of a media menu, at and Music on the Quickfire, Media Center on the, the Voyager. Uh, they both have, you know, you can shop music on both of them. AT&T store, Verizon store, the VCast stuff I think is a little bit more robust in terms of uh, in terms of shopping music and that kind of thing. The Voyager does mobile TV service. I don't have the, the TV service hooked up right now. You can see the X and I don't have reception. But you can do uh, live TV, VCast mobile TV on the Voyager. Uh, the Quickfire We'll go to the main menu. Uh, you can do the cellular video, the CV streaming cellular video on the Quickfire, not the full-on AT&T Mobile TV service like you can get on the Eternity or the View. Um, we can also, if you go into My Stuff, you can play back videos off the phone memory, off an SD card on the phone. We'll look quickly at the music players. And so you get the uh, the standard VCast music player here on the Voyager, which if you're a Verizon user, uh, you know what that's all about. And you can do it on the internal screen, or you can do it on the touch screen, although it only works in widescreen mode. Um, on the Quick Fire, and again, having some problems with the touch screen on the Quick Fire. Here's your music player. I don't know that we have any music loaded in. A little bit slower to respond on the Quickfire as well, obviously. The Voyager, just in general, I think provides a more uh, enjoyable user experience. Um, you know, the one of the big things is the touchscreen responsiveness, which you know we touched on a lot in the video, obviously. The other is that the keyboard is just bigger and easier to use, I think. Uh, the Quickfire isn't a horrible keyboard, but just not quite as comfortable as uh, the Voyager. And you know, the Voyager's just, it's a little bit more refined all the way around in terms of the menus, the way it operates, the responsiveness, all that kind of stuff. You know, the Quickfire is kind of a new, a new device, a new sort of breed of devices, the first in the line of devices, if you will. What, whereas the Voyager really comes out of several devices from LG and Verizon, the original V, the NV, and then, you know, the Voyager and the NV2. Um, and for that matter, if you don't need the mobile TV service and the touchscreen, the NV2 is also a really great device on Verizon for messaging. Very similar, a little bit smaller, uh, a, a very similar keyboard that's also very good to use. Doesn't have the external display, or the big external display, has a small one. You've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. But another interesting choice. And the thing now is that because the Voyager has been out for so long, you can get it pretty cheap these days. Verizon's selling it for less, but you can also look around on some of the uh, you know, third-party retailers, if you go to phonedog.com, we have a whole phone finder, or rate plan finder thing that can help you find deals. You can get pretty good deals on the Voyager now. So pricing isn't, you know, really an issue when you're comparing the two phones. The Voyager might actually be cheaper. I'm not, I'm not sure it depends. Also, you know, if you're looking at what day you're looking at, because prices change all the time. Um, so even though the Voyager, you know, the top of the line phone when it came out, it's been out for a while. It's an oldie, but it's still a goodie. Um, and whereas, again, the Quickfire is, you know, newer, so they're still, I think, working out some of the kinks. It's kind of a newer device. Um, if you're on AT&T and you're interested in a messaging device but don't want a full-on smartphone, I'd also encourage you to take a look at the other, a couple other of their uh, new messaging phones that came out, you know, kind of for the, the 2008 Christmas holiday season. 
Uh, the Slate, Pantex Slate, I think is a really nice device. It's a, it's a uh, candy bar type device, so it's kind of, you know, larger but thinner. Doesn't have a touchscreen, doesn't do 3G actually, but for just basic messaging and email, it's, it's, keyboard's great. And then there's also the Samsung Propel, Propel and the Pantech Matrix, which offer up uh, other full QWERTY options. They don't have the touchscreen. Again, you know, the touchscreen, uh, it's a nice feature. The touchscreen on the Quickfire I found to be a little, little wonky to use, you know, a little tricky, so definitely try before you buy. If you're on Verizon, I have the Voyager again is a great option. If you don't need the touchscreen, the NV2 is a great option. And uh, lots of rumors kicking around. I got a lot of information about a new LG messaging phone coming out, the 9600. So far as I understand, it's ready to go. They just have to decide when they want to launch it. Uh, this is mid-January, I'm making this video. So it should be out soon. And that's gonna have some kind of a modular system where it's a touchscreen phone, kind of like the Dare, but then it apparently will have a a QWERTY keyboard that you can kind of snap on and off the phone if you want to have the full keyboard experience. So um, there you go, it's a hot category right now, the messaging phones, and uh, the winner of this dogfight I'd say definitely is the LG Voyager for Verizon. So if you're in the market for a messaging phone and you like the touchscreen and you have your choice of carriers, I'd say check out the uh, check out the Voyager for sure on Verizon. And also, you know, if you're a Sidekick fan, should be some new Sidekicks coming out this year. I would imagine we'll see a Sidekick with 3G, maybe even a touchscreen, you never know. Whatever comes out, we'll have it for you on PhoneDog.com. And you can hit us up, check out the forums. Uh, you can ask us questions about the devices and also lots of conversation going on. So I'm sure owners of the Voyager and the uh, Quickfire will have lots more to say than I do, because I test all the phones, I use them for a while, I get to know them, and then I have to move on to the next device. The people who actually own them and use them every day, they're the ones with the real knowledge to share with you. So check it out on the forums. For Phone Dog, I'm Noah. This has been the Voyager versus Quickfire Dogfight. We'll see you next time.